Hello again, and today we're having a look at the P1 Nano from Icon. Uh, now this is one of the controllers that came up a couple of years ago, I think, at uh, the NAM show, um, which is the uh, big music uh, show that happens in Las Vegas, I think, every year. Um, it's taken a while to come to market. It's been around now for a few months. Um, there's a number of different versions of their new range of control surfaces. Uh, I'm looking at the Icon um, website now. So if you look at the V1M, it's probably their flagship controller. Um, I haven't got a V1M. I'd like a V1M. I haven't got a V1M. What I have is the cheapest, I guess, smallest, most compact um, of their new range, um, which is the P1 Nano. Um, I encourage you to have a flick through this website, and I'll put the link um, below, below in the comments. There's a lot of information that tells you basically what they're trying to do with this control surface. Um, they're very ambitious, uh, covering uh, almost all the doors that are on the market today. Um, they've gone a long way towards doing that. Sure, there's more work to do, but there's a lot of complexity as a result of the um, standards that are in place. Uh, particularly the Mackie standard is quite old now. It's an extremely sound well used, uh, well designed for its day protocol, uh, but we're kind of desperate for Mackie to release um, a version two protocol, or for someone else that has the clout in the industry. And I think it's only Mackie that have that as a result of the work they've previously done with the MCU. Uh, that's the Mackie control um, protocol. Um, we're kind of in this kind of uh, position where. Every new bit of hardware wants to support the existing protocol, uh, de facto protocol, which is the Mac MCU protocol, but they also want to move things forward. And it's a bit of a dilemma how they match those two things together. Anyway, I'm starting to blabber. Um, I'll let you have a look at yourself. Um, let's get stuck in. All I'm going to show you today is the basics. Um, got more videos lined up to show you a bit more. In particular, um, there's a lot of information around uh, the configuration of uh, this area here. There are uh, one, two, three, four, five different sets of buttons and you they are all configurable. Um, there are some issues with doing that, um, but you know, they've done a, an excellent job to have got this far um, with, with what they have. Um, I'm going to talk about that more in a, another video that, that deals with that. Uh, today, what I want to show you is the basics. Um, so, we want to be able to play music, so hit the play button. And um, we've got the ball rolling there. Uh, desktop audio is a bit loud. Let me just turn that down. Um, about there probably is better. Um, I want to be able to pause. I want to be able to um, play music and stop. I want to be able to uh, fast forward through my playlist and rewind through my playlist. Um, so that's this set of buttons along here. And this one, I want to be able to uh, record enable. Now that brings up this dialogue, which um, at the moment I haven't got a button on there um, to, to close it, uh, but that's something that we will cover off. Um, what's possible and what isn't. I've deliberately left this um, as it comes out of the box. Uh, I've actually made a few changes for my own benefit and then I've reset it for this video. And in the next video, I'll show you a few things that I've done. Um, and it's very configurable. It's very sort of personable. So um, you can set it up to be what you want it to be, which won't necessarily be what I want it to be or what Joe Bloggs wants it to be. Um, anyway, before I blab too much, uh, let me. Oh, one of the first things I noticed when I was playing, and this is a change I have made, uh, because it's uh, in the script that's behind it, which is um, one of my old scripts which I've uh, adjusted. Um, I I found there wasn't an easy way. You've got these eight tracks along here, and it's nice having the eight tracks being shown on a small control surface like this, and it's unusual as well. Um, but what I wanted to be able to do was easily select the tracks. Now you, you can select the tracks just using um, the control surface, but it isn't straightforward. So I had to think about it and I thought, well, what can I do? 
you've got these eight buttons on the top, which obviously relate to um, the eight tracks that you're looking at. Um, by default, you're panning uh, left and right. You can probably see that in the mixer. Um, that's track one. I don't know if you can see it up there. Right, left, track two, right, left, and you can take it back to the center. Now, ordinarily, um, one of the established conventions is that if you click um, this button, it will just recenter for you. Nice to have. Um, I don't use it all that much, but it seems like a sensible option. But in this case, I thought it would be much better if um, you could select tracks using that click button. So I've modified the script to make that happen. So now I can select, I'm currently, you can see on this display here, um, I'm on selected track one. And you can probably see that in FL Studio as well, or you will when I start clicking them. Um, and I can click to select the different tracks and you'll see the track come up here and you'll see it highlighted in the mixer on the left there. Um, I can bank up and down um, as many tracks as I want. I can select tracks and it's bank up actually so it was somewhere else. So I can select back 20, uh, track 20 rather, <laughs> track 23, track 18 and so on. So that's quite nice. Um, let's bank, bank back down to track one. I can move up and down the tracks one at a time and you'll see them being selected in the mixer and in the display here which is nice. Um, let's go back down to one. Um, I can also select the master fader. You'll see that come up there and then you'll see now there's a incongruity here in so much as what you probably want to see is the master fader on the mixer going up and down. What you actually get is the main volume control top left by the menu and if, if you've got really razor sharp eyes, you'll see that is actually going up and coming down. I'm going to leave it fairly low because when I play a track later on, um, I don't want it blasting out, uh, if at all. OK, now I'm getting confused now with what I have shown you and what I haven't shown you. Um, let's, let's go through. So I, I've shown you going up and down the banks, banking at your top and down. Um, I've shown that this is where you select the different um, sets of buttons to the right. Um, I've shown you um, clicking to select tracks. I've shown you panning left and right. Oh, now these three buttons here allow you to select either different doors, and the, it does say door here, so I can select a different door two and different door three. I haven't got them set up. Um, or what you can do with FL Studio, there's a whole load of different Mackie scripts and there are some great developers in the forums, the scripting forum, that have uploaded different versions of Mackie scripts which do different things for different controllers. Now there's no reason why you can't have um, three scripts up with different functionality on these other buttons and you can flick between them. And I will show that in another um, video. I'll show it when it sort of makes sense to show it with uh, with different scripts. I need to kind of go through and see which ones make sense and which ones don't. Um, OK, so what have we got on this side? I've shown you the master fader. I've got that selected, so I've unselected. Uh, the flip button allows you to change the functionality. So um, effectively, what that means is the uh, the V-Pots become faders and the faders become V-Pots. So it's just a different way of working. Um, this button here, I cannot remember what that does. Oh, it looks like it's record enable. Now, some of the functionality I would have expected to work with my script and it's not. So what I've done is um, I've got a debug version of my script. If I go into the script output here, script window, and I'll just clear it to start off with. As I select a button, it's going to give me um, the Mackie functionality and a bit of technical information um, which I can use when I'm scripting. So I can see that the Mackie function for that is record one. Kind of makes sense. I'm not, I don't know why um, that isn't triggering the record button in FL Studio. It will when the script is finished. That's something I'm going to have to visit if I want to carry on with, with using this control surface. Um, S, solo one, 
so that's probably solo in the tracks yeah there we go so the track i've got selective let's let's say we want to solo the drums track here um i can click solo and you'll see in the mixer there on the left um it is the only track that uh, can be played so and that's on and off and uh, i can also mute individual tracks and if i select different tracks i can mute them all as many as i want um, just using this control surface um, let's put that back to normal so we've got no muted tracks just for lack of confusion i've got up and down here oh now that's up and down looks as though it's related to just the currently selected bank and you'll see and if you can see because it is quite small that i'm changing the selected track in here now i'm not quite sure what the implications of that are because um, they're not changing in fl studio but interesting that will be something that um, i can look closer at and see what can we do with that um, what other buttons haven't i shown you there's some grayed out buttons here i have never clicked these before i'm going to click them now just to see if they bring anything up um, on the uh, script output window and um, no they haven't um anything else the navigation button down here um, this is also something i need to look at you'll see at the moment it defaults to moving things in the mixer um i like it default to the playlist so i'm going to have to make some scripting changes there um there are some options for changing um that's up and down of the currently selected window so interestingly i've got the script output window set at the moment so it allows me to go up and down uh, if i select the uh, playlist it allows me to go up and down in the playlist um, the zoom functionality should be working you can see there um, i'm selecting zoom right and left and zoom up and down but what i'm getting though is um up and down uh so i'm i don't know if i'm going yeah i'm getting right and left um i'm not quite sure how to make that zoom um that's something i need to look at and the same with these buttons over here um i'm getting information but i'm not quite sure what use we can make of those yet um but you know early days for me um, i've only just started looking at this control surface um, i've done a lot of scripting um, i'm happy to uh, give a little of my time to see what can be done and i was chuffed with selecting the tracks because that was a very easy thing to do um, and it's quite effective so that kind of thing thumbs up is great okay um, is there anything i haven't shown you i'm waffling on now Oh, the only thing I will show you is uh, on the next video, I'm going to show you this area here. And you'll see here you've got 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, and 3, 4 on this uh, green section. Interestingly, though, they, they are effectively Mackie, um, original Mackie settings, which are no longer relevant. So those are the auxiliary tracks. Um, those are the auxiliary buses. Those are the outputs, and this would relate to, relate to um, mixers that and uh, mixers that went to physical mixers, um, and also uh, MIDI outputs that go to hardware instruments that are connected. Um, so some relevance still today, but not certainly not as relevant as they used to be. Um, now I've I've got um, scripted functionality behind each of these three buttons. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. The only one I can remember is this last one, which is the mixer colours. Um, so what I want to do is obviously have have this say mixer colour and have each of these say what is going on behind the scenes. And the other thing I want to do is I want to change some of these descriptions. So mixer F10. I don't, I'm not interested in the F10 bit. I just want to see mixer there. Uh, channel. I just want to see channel rack, not channel F11. Um, tempo F12 yeah okay um the tempo button is interesting because it's uh it's this functionality where you click at a certain speed and it will adjust the tempo of the track uh to meet it and i think it does tell you 
um, when it's done that. Um, anyway, that does work. Um, okay, I think I'm going to call it a day there because I'm, I'm starting to um, to get stuck as to what I can show you and still keep it fairly simple. The next video, as I say, will cover this area here in a bit more detail. Now, from what I've seen, there are some complications. Um, I'll try and make some sense of those. I personally think um, that the, um, the software that's available now is very good um, because they've addressed all doors. That's why it's very good. The functionality for each individual door, such as FL Studio, it's not 100% there. Um, but anyway, um, I'll perhaps show you some of those issues going forward and hopefully we'll see those being rectified by uh, Icon um, in the near future. OK, well, thanks very much for your time. I'm going to call it a day there. Stop recording. Um, I hope you've got something out of that. If you have, uh, give it a like. If you want to see more videos like this, then um, subscribe. Thanks very much for your time. Bye bye.